The idea of physically stepping into virtual reality is an astounding concept almost as old as the idea of VR itself. Omnidirectional treadmills are an elaborate and complicated piece of technology designed to do exactly this. And for this video, I researched the interesting history of these devices to examine both the past and future of this niche turned household gadget from our dystopian future that's literally arrived at my doorstep. Let's talk about ODTs. Hey guys, and welcome back to the Virtual Reality Show, where we talk about any and all things related to virtual reality inside virtual reality. <laughs> I'm your host, Fia. If you've ever tried on a VR headset, one of the first things you've probably noticed is the mental disconnect between you and your physical body when exploring a virtual world. Navigating with a controller while immersed in a 3D environment rather than using your own body can lead to cyber sickness and a break in immersion as your brain struggles to adapt your senses to the simulation. The misaligned information from your brain to your body causes what we know as the VR locomotion problem. Along with devices like shoes and gerbil balls, omnidirectional treadmills look to fix exactly that. For this video, I deep dived into ODTs as both a technology and concept to highlight why these niche products are important to our future as well as where they even came from in the first place. If you spend a lot of time in virtual reality already, you've probably heard of the first consumer level ODT released called the Catwalk C, whose company even sent me a unit which sparked the burning curiosity inside me to create this omnidirectional deep dive. So what even is an omnidirectional treadmill? Well, well, it's the most straightforward device for providing unencumbered 360 degree movement in any direction with the purpose of exploring virtual environments using your entire body. Different innovators have thought of this concept in quite a few ways to create them at this point, all with the hope to increase immersiveness through engaging the entire physical body within a specified space. VR headsets date way back to the 60s, but it wasn't until three decades later that there was even a working prototype model for an omnidirectional treadmill to accompany them. So let's time travel back to far before my time, the 1990s. The first omnidirectional treadmill was patented by David Carmain in 1996 and was funded by, you guessed it, the US military. Ah, the greatest love story ever told, war and technology. It was the third iteration of locomotion developed for the United States Strike Command, following the unicycle-styled pedaling uniport of 1994 and the single-directional treadport of 1995 that allowed upper torso directional reactivity. This six and a half by seven foot bulk of tech weighed in at a massive 1200 pounds and was 15 feet tall. It had an outer and inner treadmill constructed atop of each other made up of over 3,000 rollers, with the top roller belt treadmill perpendicular to the bottom one. The way the rollers cradled and rotated allowed the user to walk in arbitrary directions while using the device. Because the device was intended for military training, it found its home at the Army Research Lab of Orlando, Florida. But meanwhile, across the pond, Dr. Hiro Iwata was building a belt-based treadmill at the Virtual Reality Lab of University of Tsukuba, Japan, just north of Tokyo. After experimenting with his virtual perambulator, his 1999 invention was the Taurus Treadmill, an ODT built of 12 smaller treadmill belts built in the shape of an elongated torus driven in a perpendicular direction. The magnetic sensors below the user's feet would move in the opposite direction to cancel the motion of each step. Definitely an upgrade from a piece of paper on the floor. So skip a few years to 2003 and we see the new kid on the block, the ODBP. The Omnidirectional Ball Bearing Disc Platform was created by the Department of Computer Science and Information Engineering at Tamkang University in Taiwan. <sighs> whose surface consisted of moving balls constrained within a concave walking surface. The users would move the balls while walking with a harness strapped onto them for counter force. Man, gotta love balls. The same year Tam King University was tripping on balls, the US Army started throwing money at the Cyberwalk Project, a second generation belt-based ODT that evolved into its own research project in 2008, funded by the European Sixth Framework Program to a team consisting of a bunch of German researchers. This one was based on the Taurus design of Iwata's ODT, but I quote, developed and implemented several new design solutions to overcome some of the shortcomings in Iwata's original design. These included improvements to normal walking speeds, a stronger ability to change speed and direction, compensations for walking velocity, and higher safety measures for users with no previous walking experience in mind. 
The cyberwalk was 5 meters long on each side and used a Vicon motion capturing system. The mocap system would monitor the user's position and then compute estimates for their speed and direction to adjust the belts beneath them accordingly. Basically meaning that if you walk too far away from the center, the machine just pushes you back without abruptly throwing you off balance. Once the 20 teens rolled around a few years after this project, we were met with the birth of Oculus, also marking the birth of consumer VR. 2012 started this era of VR commercialization with the launch of the original Oculus Kickstarter, but the building hype towards VR was growing outside of that with major ODT companies getting their start quickly after. The Virtuix Omni Kickstarter launched in 2013, raising 1.1 million alone for their original ODT campaign, which has made them a hot name ever since, considering in 2013, barely anyone had their hands on VR to begin with. Cat VR also had their formation in 2013 and finally put out their Kickstarter in 2015 for the original iteration of their Catwalk Slide Mill Treadmill. Slide Mills seem to be the best type of at-home omnidirectional treadmills we can get our hands on for the time being, but anyone who's watched Ready Player One probably has noticed that Wade Watts' home setup resembles that of the belted nature of the moving ones I mentioned from the 90s and 2000s. Well, believe it or not, the treadmill he uses in the movie is actually a real omnidirectional treadmill made by a real company with maybe just a little movie magic thrown in that we don't even have to wait for to exist. Infinidex started up in 2015, shortly before the release of the Oculus Rift CV1, as the founder was good friends with Oculus founder Palmer Lucky and wanted to wait for the true VR commercialization phase before pushing his own ODT company. This treadmill takes after the cyberwalk in a lot of ways, but drops its massive size down, allowing it to even fit inside a 6x6 foot play space, and adds a support ring around the waist to compensate for easy stability. I personally find the design of the Infinidex to be the most straightforwardly appealing ODT I've seen, but we don't know at what point we'll even have any hope for a consumer version. They don't give their prices out anywhere online, and the only article I've seen claims that it'll sell from 40 to 60k, which seems ridiculous, but I also wouldn't be too surprised considering that their clients are likely going to be aimed at professional training simulations funded by the government. There's still other companies that have also spread it out in recent times, each trying to bring their own solution to the VR locomotion problem table. VR is growing in popularity, which means that more and more eyes and brains are being brought to the ODT concept as a whole, which leads us to the present. After Cat VR's success with their professional level catwalk slide mill, they launched another Kickstarter in 2020 for their consumer level product, the Catwalk C. It raised 1.6 million on Kickstarter, demonstrating how adamantly excited so many of us VR fans are to really get our feet dirty in virtual mud. Cat themselves kindly sent me a unit and after trying this thing out for the first time, my curiosity of ODTs and the importance of this one being for consumers seemed more interesting than just a product review. After hopping in VR to talk with a cat representative, I think I realized the importance of a product like this being available for this price. So first of all, we need some freedom of movement, but we also need some stability, right? We need to be able to move up and down to jump or crouch, but at the same time, we need to be safe. We need to provide a treadmill that is uh, lightweight and compact, but it also needs to be durable. So these are the things that are really, really difficult to achieve together because they always stand in opposition with one another. I don't think even I had a true appreciation for how incredible this thing is before now. At first glance, you might see it as a clunky piece of metal, but there's a whole history here built off the starry-eyed hopes of previous generation reality explorers. It's a game that lets you actually walk into the virtual reality because when you have a headset, you got a window, right? You have a place to look through. When you have your controllers, of course, you can try to push yourself through the window to gather your head and hands, but you still cannot fully physically experience what's in there. And we believe a treadmill gives you an actual gate to walk through and experience the virtual reality. Although Kat sent me this unit, this video is not a review about the Catwalk C. My honest thoughts are that it's far from feeling natural. It feels constrained, being in a waist harness, sliding around. It's pretty loud just to hop in on at any time of the day. It's not a product I would use on a regular basis as a daily VR user. But when you stop to realize that this is the first affordable iteration of a long-awaited niche futuristic piece of hardware technology that's been fantasized about since the idea of VR itself was first conceptualized, 
Well, I think it's got a lot going for it. It's not tens of thousands of dollars or only available to the military. It's a way for you and I both for the first time to physically step into these imaginary worlds we've been dreaming about since we were children. While Catwalk C is the first of its kind, we do have to keep an eye out for companies like Virtuix that have already dabbled in shipping out ODT units with Kickstarter for upcoming projects in the near future. The virtual reality ball has started rolling, which means that interest and growth in this sort of tech is going to be sliding up an exponential graph from here on out. I found out a lot about ODTs and VR locomotion through the making of this video, and as someone who knows nothing about engineering, it's kind of special how I got interested in this. Treadmills, slide mills, rotating ball mills, there's a lot that's been made and more to come. ODTs are big and bulky and most likely will stay this way, even as they get better and cheaper just because of the nature of what they do. They aren't convenient or easy to use by any means, which is a big deterrent for people who may love VR and even have the money. For this reason, I'm honestly not sure they'll ever become a common commodity even among VR enthusiasts, but I do believe that for those such as myself with a burning desire to explore every inch of the infinite frontier that is virtual reality, there is something bright right now below our, I mean, horizon. If you enjoyed this video, then please give it a like and subscribe to the Virtual Reality Show channel. This was a long time coming and a lot of work to research since there's very little information about the history of omnidirectional treadmills anywhere online. Huge thanks to CatVR for sending me a unit and inspiring me to make this video. If you want to keep up to date with me and my adventures, then follow my Twitter. Also, supporting my Patreon is the best way to directly allow me to create more videos just like this. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I've been your host, Fia, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! Special thanks to this month's Patreon members and virtual VIPs, Black Amethyst, Diamond, Klukulay, Mr. Cheerio, Neoplasm, Scormaller.